Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course Aspects of Biochemical Engineering. Uh, in the last lecture, I tried to discuss the stoichiometry of bioprocess and stoichiometry of bioprocess uh, basically deals with the intermolecular relationship of different component present in the reaction mixture and also we can determine what is the theoretical limitation of this particular process. And in addition to that, the stoichiometry gives two information. One is the validity of the experimental results, and another is the that you know how amount of heat evolved in, in the biochemical process. As you know, that most of the biochemical processes are usually operated at ambient temperature and atmospheric pressure. And particularly since we are in the tropical country, our during summer the temperature rises to as high as 45 uh, degree centigrade. So, we uh, since it is a exothermic reaction, so we required a lot of uh, cooling requirement in the to maintain the temperature close to 30 35 degree centigrade. So, <coughs> that, that is why we want to ca we can calculate how much heat evolved through this biochemical process. Now, today I have I want to discuss the very important topic that is reaction thermodynamics and as you know the thermodynamics is a very important uh, topic and it deals with uh, if you look at it, it deals with mostly the heat and temperature with the relation to energy and work that uh, now uh, this uh, thermodynamics uh, that in, in increases the efficiency of the steam engine we call it Carnot cycle. We know this is the Carnot, this is the in the name of French physicist Nicolas Leonard Sadi Carnot in 1824 and he developed uh, the, the, the thermodynamics how to increase the efficiency of the, of the steam engines. Now, but uh, chemical we are interested here mostly on chemical thermodynamics. Chemical thermodynamics studies the nature of the role of entropy in the process of the chemical reaction has provided the bulk expansion and knowledge of the field. So, we basically discuss that how entropy the affects in the chemical reaction and also we will discuss some kind of Gibbs free energy changes that affect the chemical reaction. So, in the in the this lecture I divided into two part the chemical thermodynamics 1 and chemical thermodynamics 2. Chemical thermodynamics 1 mostly deal with the thermodynamics as a whole how it is looks and, and chemical engineering thermodynamics 2 mostly I shall discuss on the thermodynamics of the chemical process. Now, if you look at uh, first let us uh, let us try to find out what do what do you mean by system and surroundings. Now, system uh, if, you, if you look at here that system is a part of the physical universe uh, under study and while the rest of the universe is the surrounding. Now, suppose a beaker this is the let us, let us assume a beaker and inside the beaker we have water and this is we consider a system. Now, system lying on a table and this is all the other than the beaker whatever we have that is we call it surroundings. So, so there should be this is how system and surroundings can be defined. Now, uh, uh, if you look at again system and surroundings, we have uh, three different systems like uh, we have uh, isolated system, open system and the closed system. Now, let us see what do you mean by isolated system. Isolated system means that uh, no transfer of mass. Uh, mass uh, or energy across the boundary of the system. So, here this is the system and there is no, no energy and mass transfer take place 
and this, since there is no uh, energy and mass transfer take place across this uh, boundary, we call it isolated system. And it is a, it is perfectly insulated and impermeable, impermeable. A gas confined in a piston cylinder arrange in the wall of which are made of insulated material. So this is. Now next is the open system. Open system, what is happening? Both the mass and energy, energy can transfer. You see the, here the mass transfer. It is the energy transfer that 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 transfer take place between the, the system and the surroundings. Now we call it the open vessel um, having a liquid. That is, we can we can we can give the example of the system. Now closed system, what is happening in the closed system, the energy can transfer across the boundary but not the mass. So here the energy transfer takes place but not mass, a, a gas confined in a piston cylinder having good thermal conductor. So uh, the energy transfer takes place but uh, due to good uh, conductivity of the material some kind of energy transmission takes place but not mass. If it is this we call it closed system. Now, now uh, another very important term is there, what we call thermodynamic states. Now, what do you mean by thermodynamic states? We have two different uh, property we have. One is called point property, another is path property. Point property means one point, initial point and final point. Now, initial that change of property value depends on the initial and final stage. So, um, suppose temperature is the en entropy, the initial entropy was S, S1 and final entropy S2. So, change of entropy is the S2 minus S1. This is uh, we call it del S. This is uh, the entropy change, enthalpy change and internal energy change are the, <laughs> the there is a point property. And what is the path property? Change of property value depends on the path by which the process carried out in addition to initial and final, how these changes take place. As for example, what and work and heat transfer, how, how they take place in between the system. If you look at the Carnot cycle, we have, this has been done very nicely that how this path property can be, can be done. Now, another, if you look at the properties of this, of the system, that uh, we have two properties. One is called extensive property, another is intensive property. Now, extensive property deals with the quantity of matter specified in the system. Now, as for example, we, we when you call it mass of the system, mass of the material, volume of the material, then it is um, kind of uh, extensive property. Intensive property independent of the of the system size. As for example, pressure, temperature, specific volume. So we have two properties as per thermodynamic system is concerned. One is called extensive property, another is intensive property. Now, uh, if you look, if you look, uh, come to the process. We have two type of process. One is called isothermal process and adiabatic process. Now, isothermal process basically the temperature of the system remains constant, and adiabatic process the heat transfer remaining constant. There is no heat transfer take place. That is how this uh, this is defined. Now, in case of isothermal process, it attains um, that the, the temperature is constant either by removing heat or supplying the heat to the system as for example, melting of ice. Now, another we have the reversible process uh, and the reversible process are those processes in which the changes are carried out slowly and uh, that the system and surrounding always are in equilibrium. This is called reversible process. Now, I can, I can give a very typical example. Suppose there is a system comprises of A and B and they are in equilibrium. Now, if you increase the temperature of A, uh, then what will happen the, that heat will transfer 
from A to Z. The kind of now, if you if you cool the uh, b, uh, b temperature of A, then heat will flow from B to A. So this is what is metal that two metals jarred A B, which are in thermal equilibrium, are in contact with each other. Now, when the heat uh, jarred is the A slightly heat jarred A slightly, heat starts flow from jarred A to jarred B. And this is the direction of the uh, of this process. Now, this process can be reversed just the cooling the jarred slightly. Then, when the jarred is cooled, heat flow from B to A till the thermal equilibrium reach. Now, another process we have that is called irreversible process. Now, if you look at irreversible process that uh, we have, this, this process cannot be done undone by exact, exactly reversing the changes of the system. Uh, all spontaneous processes are irreversible, all real processes are irreversible. That is uh, irreversible means I, we want to mean the unidire unidirectional and reversible means uh, the bidirectional. So, uni uh, the, so, this process cannot be undone by exactly reversing the change of the system. That is why we call it irreversible system. Now, now let, let me discuss about the first law of thermodynamics. What is the first law of thermodynamics? It states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. The total energy of the universe or isolated system is constant. So, this is the first law of thermodynamics. Now, another uh, form we can explain like this. The change of internal energy of a thermodynamic system is equal to the heat energy added to the two or lost, uh, lost by the system plus work done or not by the system. This is, this is, this can be mathematically or you know this, this is expressed like this del u equal to q plus w, where q is we considered as the heat energy that change that take place and w is the work and, and del u is considered as the change of internal energy. Now, Q assigned to be positive, the Q assigned to be positive value when heat is absorbed, but uh, it is negative when heat is lost by the system. So, one is the endothermic, another is the exothermic. So, W is assigned positive when its work is do work is done on, but negative when work is done by the system. Now, for processes. Uh, the, that uh, do not involve the phase changes, the positive value of internal energy results in temperature increase. So, if we do not have any change of phases, then change of internal energy positive that indicate temperature will rise in the process. Now, <laughs> enthalpy, there is another very important term, what you call enthalpy, that enthalpy is the measurement of energy in a thermodynamic system. Now, how we can define this is equal to uh, uh, internal energy plus P into V, V in the, with the work done by the system. This is internal energy plus P into V. Now, if at constant pressure, then P into del V is the kind of work done and this is, this is the internal energy. The change of internal energy is the H product minus H reactant. Now, we have, uh, we have two type of reaction as you know, one is called a endothermic reaction and there is the exothermic reaction. Endothermic reaction means we mean that uh, absorb the heat from the surroundings uh, and an endothermic reaction feel cold where del G is always uh, greater, greater than 0. I can give the example when glucose, when, when we make a solution in the water, then uh, the, the temperature cools down. That is the, that is the kind of endo, uh, example of the endothermic reactions. The exothermic reaction is a transfer of heat to the surroundings. I can give the very simple example heating of wood or heating of coal where the temperature increases. The exothermic reaction feel hot where del G 
is greater than uh, it is less than zero that del g always should be negative and here del h del, here del h is ne, um, is negative and here del h will be positive now let me come to the entropy because which is very important property of thermodynamics and it is a measure of randomness or disorder of the chemical system if we have high entropy, how the question come how you define entropy? Entropy is the S is the this is equal to dQ by T. dQ is the heat change that takes place and, uh, and T is the, the temperature that we have. So <coughs> now uh, the high entropy change is the highly disordered system and low entropy change that means well organized system, no such thing as negative entropy. Now uh, del, del S of a chemical reaction we can always express as entropy of the product minus entropy of the reactant. As I explained that uh, at, a, at a constant temperature the entropy change, change of entropy can be explained like this. Uh, this is how we can, we can explain where the Q R, uh, 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 Rdp is the heat that is transferred when the process is carried out reversibly at a constant temperature and T is the temperature in Kelvin. So, capital T always uh, we indicate as a Kelvin. Now, now if, you, if you look at the reversible system, ideally that uh, ideal reversible system that uh, change of entropy of the universe that is equal to that uh, the change of entropy of the system plus change of entropy in the surrounding that should be equal to 0. Now, in case of irreversible process what we call real and spontaneous the change of entropy in the universe equal to change of entropy of the system plus surrounding that should be always greater than 0. That is, uh, that is in case of so spontaneous system always the entropy will be will be a higher value that we have. Now, exothermic reaction and positive entropy right, as I told you this is called spontaneous and uh, in, in case of endothermic reaction and negative del S we call non-spontaneous. So, this is the two type of reaction that we have and on the basis of change of entropy we can easily find out what is the nature of the reaction, whether it is spontaneous or whether it is non-spontaneous. Now, this is very interesting that uh, if we how, how we can monitor the, uh, the exothermic reaction, how, what, how system and surrounding influence the entropy change of the system. Now, here the all are the examples of the exothermic reaction and under what circumstances we have the exothermic reaction. Now, let us take the first instance for a exothermic reaction in which um, change of entropy of the system, this is the change of entropy of the system is positive and change of entropy of the surroundings is positive, then in change of entropy of the universe should be positive. The reaction will be always spontaneous. Now, in case of uh, the change of uh, that entropy is negative, but if the change of entropy of the surrounding is more than change of entropy of the system, then this entropy of the universe will be positive. The another instance we have for a endothermic reaction in which the uh, change of uh, system is positive and change of entropy in the system is positive. but uh, change of surroundings uh, also smaller than that of the change of entropy of the system then surroundings will be also positive and this is <coughs> this is also example of the endothermic reaction so <coughs> in second law of thermodynamics is that the the inverse spontaneously tends towards the increasing the disorder or randomness this is the nature of the uh, system that we have is always uh, tends to increasing the disorder or randomness and mathematically the change of uh, entropy of the un universal that will be always greater than 0. Driving force of the spontaneous process 
is an increase in the entropy of the universe as i po as i to told told you this is uh, this this is the the real system that we have that always the entropy should be positive another very interesting term that we have as per <laughs> thermodynamics is concerned what do you call gibbs uh, free energy change now gibbs free energy change is the thermodynamics potential that can be used to calculate the maximum reversible work as constant temperature and pressure that is isothermal or isobaric isothermal means where temperature is remaining constant isobaric means where the pressure remaining constant now absolute value of g or or free energy the free energy uh, <coughs> cannot be measured but change of free energy can be measured the mathematically it can be expressed like this change of free energy equal to del h minus t into del s as t is the um, is a kelvin a measure in kelvin and as standard condition standard free energy change equal to standard change of enthalpy plus uh, t into standard change of the entropy of the system so this is the equation we should remember for calculating the free energy change now if you look at the del g if we, del g is negative uh, free energy change is negative the forward reaction is spontaneous and if del g is uh, zero then uh, this is the in equilibrium and del g is positive the reaction is spontaneous in the reverse direction reverse direction means i want to mean there is a a to a to b this is the reaction that we have if this direction is there then uh, del g should be positive then then del g will be positive but <coughs> if we if we have this uh, a to in the reverse direction then <coughs> then uh, del g and, and sorry this uh, this is negative this is in uh, if if del g is negative then it is spontaneous a to b but if you if del g is positive this is positive then if it reverse direction it will be spontaneous but this direction it is non spontaneous but at the equilibrium condition that uh, equilibrium condition what will happen del g the change of internal energy that should be equal to zero now this is the reaction spontaneity and the sign of del h del in del s and del g so this is if 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 here if uh, del, del h is for negative and uh, now if you if you look at previous so we have this equation that uh, we shall have to remember this equation del h equal to del h minus t t uh, t del s now if you if you if you see it so you have i can write like this del g equal to we can del g equal to del h minus t into del s am i right now we can compare here if del h is positive and, and del s is uh, positive then this is negative and uh, and, uh, and and del s is negative and then then uh, del h is negative and uh, if this is negative and this is negative then this will be negative so this will be spontaneous at all temperature now if del h is positive and uh, del s is negative <coughs> then this will be t into del s will be positive then del h will be positive then the non spontaneous at all temperature now here it if del h is positive del s is positive del h is uh, del h is positive and del s is positive means this is negative and uh, this uh, this may be plus or minus so it may be at uh, spontaneous at high temperature and non spontaneous low temperature now if del h is negative and uh, del s is negative then this will be positive now again it that uh, the change of free energy it may be plus or minus the spontaneous has lower temperature this is the reversible of this if you whatever we have and whatever we have just reversible of this and spon and non spontaneous at high temperature 
Now, the, this is the problem that we also try to uh, try to work out that how this uh, we can we can use for calculating the spin temperature required for any kind of uh, re re reaction chemical reaction. Now, let us assume that uh, that. Uh, that the del H of the reaction is the 158 kilojoule and del H is 411 joule per uh, Kelvin. Now, this is the equation we have and uh, so, uh, so in case of spontaneous reaction that uh, uh, del G should be less than uh, uh, this, uh, this value, this is equal del G, this, should, this value should be less than 0, that means it should be negative then and only then it should be it should be spontaneous now what we can write we can put these values here we can we can, we can put the value here that uh, that value of a h and value of s we can put and then we can interchange we can find t is greater than uh, 384 uh, kelvin that means if we wanted to have the spontaneity of the re reaction we shall have to maintain the temperature at 384 degrees centigrade. So this is a very interesting problem. How how we can we can determine the uh, uh, that is spontaneous of the reaction at at a different temperature. But this is the suppose we want to because we whenever we carry out any kind of chemical reaction, we are interested to make it spontaneous uh, to get a more product. So naturally that uh, so question comes that under what circumstances it can give the more product. So this is this is one very interesting thing that we have. Next problem that I have that is uh, calculate the change of entropy by heating 100 grams or 100 kg of water uh, from 27 degrees centigrade to steam at 100 degrees centigrade. Specific heat of water uh, is the this much and latent load of vaporization of the, this also we can uh, we can calculate very easily. As you know, <coughs> the change of entropy uh, the for heating 100 kg of water from 27 degree to, to 100 degree centigrade, we can calculate at m <coughs> Cp into uh, uh, and the DLNT. So I can I I have already told you that del S equal to what del S equal to dQ by T. Am I right? So when you when you heat your water. What is happening? What is the, the ms into del t? The del t by del t. So this is equal to ms. <coughs> this is d l n t that we have. So we can, we can have similar type of expression here. So mass is 100 kg, 100 kg. That is given there. This is the specific heat of water, and this is the uh, l n. This is the three. This is the temperature. This is 100 degree centigrade, and this is uh, the 27 degree centigrade. So this is the change of enthalpy that we have if we heat the water from 27 to 100 degree centigrade. Now, if you do the vaporization, the uh, the equation will be uh, the different. The reason is that vaporization takes place at 100 degree centigrade. It is kind of phase change from the liquid to uh, vapor, and latent day of vaporization is uh, this 23 into uh, into 10 to the power 5 joules per kg then we can then 100 into if we if we if we calculate that we can find it very easily that uh, the 100 into this equal to heat and this is the temperature that we required so this is how we can calculate the change of entropy for the evaporation so uh, so we can we can we can calculate uh, this entropy of the system very easily so what we what we learn in this that uh, we want to find out that uh, what is uh, what do you mean by uh, thermodynamics thermodynamic basically it is uh, deals with uh, the uh, the temperature and uh, it, it basically it, it deals with the mass and uh, temperature also how it relates with the energy and uh, and then we try to find out the, core, the, the, the define the system and surroundings how this affects the system and how uh, the how we can define the spontaneous system and non spontaneous system and spontaneous system and non spontaneous system can be explained with respect to entropy with respect to free energy change now when you when you talk about the entropy 
in case of spontaneous system the entropy keep on increasing but in case of uh, reversible system the change of entropy should be equal to zero now in case of free energy change we we find out that uh, in case of exothermic reaction or uh, spontaneous reaction change of entropy should be negative and in case of non spontaneous reaction in the it will be positive but if you do the reverse reaction then it should be we can convert it to the uh, spontaneous but uh, i i hope in the next lecture uh, this will be more clear when we deal with other different type of reaction thank you